now we now we're now we're in business we're in business uh and uh, yeah <sighs> all right so that is recording and we are back we are back here on riverwestradio.com this is the economy superstar radio hour with myself your erstwhile host tw hansen and we are here this evening with uh, local comedy impresario uh, Brendan O'Day, the uh, brain trust behind Malcolm Tense Productions. Uh, wait, it's not even an LLC yet, is it? Is it? It is not, and it I don't know not. that it ever will be. All um, right, doesn't matter. Doesn't need to be anything. You, you, you need assets to uh, create, and you should have assets if you're going to create an LLC, or at least you should be in a position to create great liability. If you're going to have an LLC, yes, because yes. Uh, the uh, whole idea is uh, to protect uh, yourself, and yeah, we got yeah. nothing to protect ourselves from. We're uh, we're uh, we're not that dangerous. We're not that. Uh, <laughs> uh, we certainly aren't generating a lot of assets. Uh, uh, people just aren't willing to pay for comedy in this world anymore, and uh, so you're 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 trapped in a in a cycle of working really hard for somewhat minimal return, and <laughs> and. Uh, it's you know we, we we're trying uh trying to bring the art form back and trying to get people to in be interested in coming out and seeing live comedy we've we've done a nice little job to build up a few uh open mics that uh, have, have gotten some good interest and attention so yeah it's excellent I, I mean basically anything that people can do around here even just to do anything to want to do things yeah to be you know, uh, something that doesn't involve mugging people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, River West has that. Um, uh, it, it, the nice thing River West has going for it is it's kind of an entertainment hub. It certainly has an alternative uh, music uh, aesthetic to it. Uh, and and I, sp I guess you can expand that to an alternative uh, entertainment aesthetic. Uh, I've seen some pretty amazing painters uh even uh, even some of the uh dress shops uh clothing stores resale stores uh lend themselves to a more uh, interesting aesthetic so um river west kind of has that going on it's a cool thing um that's why i you know didn't have a lot of challenge in in resettling here and and uh it feels pretty much at home uh it's uh and then it's got its own little aesthetic of of being a good source for comedic inspiration <laughs> there's a lot of stuff going on in river west that that lends itself to now sarcastic ridicule <laughs> well hey you know the sar sarcastic ridicule makes for entertaining radio so sure um. sure yeah i um yeah, I basically I had nothing prepared for tonight. Tonight is a proof of concept more than anything else. So if if, wow. if, if this is uneven, it's it's. I mean, this is going to be uneven. I think I think uh, coming up uh, after the eight o'clock to uh, hour tonight is dead air. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, basically uh, there's still lots of room to sign up. Uh, come on in to River West Film and Video here on Center Street. Um, I mean, I'd give you the exact street address if I knew it, but it's. Do you know it? You don't know it. It's it's. I mean, it's River West Film and Video. It's one of a kind. It's the next only to Fuel Cafe. Next to Fuel Cafe in a beautiful River West, really Milwaukee. Really close to Bremen Avenue and and uh, Bremen Street, I guess. Uh, yeah, you know, I I I I always I always try never to admit if I'm not prepared. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say, <laughs> hey, I came here with nothing to talk about. Um, well, uh, I, I'm a big believer in transparency of process. It's handicapped me my entire life. You, you, you know, uh, th th there are men that are men of mystery. I am not one of those <laughs> men. Uh, well, that's okay. Here's here's a moment of transparency, transparency for you. Um, thank God the computer wasn't functioning prior to my arrival at River West uh, Film and Video. Because uh, uh, with no warning, your uh, amicable host here uh, uh, called me up, <laughs> asked me what's going on, <laughs> and, uh, uh, and 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 after I started talking about uh, my horrible day's experience, uh, that's when I was informed that I was live and on the air. 
<laughs> so uh, I probably offended two potential sponsors. Uh, possibly got oh, in trouble with the. We're, with we're, the, uh, with we're the not. Uh, we're not doing sponsors. This no, no, no. Is, I get uh, it. No, I mean potential sponsors for my business. Oh. Uh, down the road and uh, and um, uh, possibly the FAA. I spoke ill of the local international airport. And, uh, uh, well, no, I mean, the airport's nice. Just don't eat the pizza. I think yeah, is the, the it is. Where, uh, you know, you should eat the pizza. Eat the pizza. If you really want to try the pizza. It's great pizza. Uh, is it? Is it? Uh, you, know, it uh, you know, I don't know what the definition of great pizza is anymore. I used to know what the definition of great pizza was. But, uh, but <laughs> regardless, uh, you know... Um, yeah, you know, you do things that 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 accept your uh, your legal position and standing in the world. And mine is that I'm such on the bottom rung of the of the universe right now. They can take everything I got. They won't pay for their first hours worth of legal fees if they take everything I have. Uh, so please come sue me. I need the press. That would be great. I'd I'd love to be sued by a a large New York pizza company that's set up in uh, in the local international airport and. I'd love for you to come yeah. sue me for saying that I po- may or may not have gotten uh, some stomach uh, ailment from consummation of your product. So, I mean, you know, th- this is River West. Virtually, what you just said of yourself, I think, can be said of almost everyone involved with and listening to this broadcast. Well, right, but that's but that's and the the key, the beautiful thing about this is, is you're going to have people on this thing. That that because of silly little things like Facebook, you know, I'm I'm not saying I got a lot of uh, friends, but we've got friends that extend out well beyond the borders of the city, the county, the state. Uh, you've got friends pr- practically all over the world that when they search for you and and uh, and and have a, a link to this, they're going to see this, and and all it takes is for one of those idiots to to have a friend who's a lawyer at a firm that wants to. <laughs> make some money tonight <laughs> so oh but but do we do this do we do we bow to that do we live in fear uh no you know you just say what you want to say um the the thing i have backing me in this is that's what happened you know uh, i'm speaking reality uh uh we actually myself and my friend had a had a minor debate over the uh uh the safety and the and the uh <laughs> present condition of the pizza that was presented in front of us and we uh so we, we we debated that we took our risk we took our risk and uh and and i and i strongly suggest anyone else shopping for a a late afternoon meal at uh, at the airport <laughs> take a moment and uh and carefully consider uh the product that's been under glass and on a counter for anywhere i don't know how long but it's a pre-cooked thing then they toss it in the oven and cook it again and i'm not saying it sat in the oven long enough to get hot enough to consume as like it was a hot pizza Uh, and and it may have you know already suffered some i I don't know may i didn't i didn't i didn't pull any samples off biopsy and analyze it i didn't i didn't uh uh, check the microscopic uh, b- biobacterial content of the said piece of pizza. I didn't do that, anything like that. I just ordered a four dollar and forty nine cent piece of pizza and <laughs> and went and ate it. And less than oh, almost exactly twelve hours later, actually, it was uh, whew, it was a uh, it was an experience. It was uh, I I sleep approximately seven steps from my bathroom and. Uh, wasn't quite certain that I was going to be uh, uh, in full uh, ensconcement on my uh, throne. <laughs> <laughs> so, I oh, was well, really going to make it. Oh, uh, well. Uh, well uh, that's what's going on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What was that? Familia? Famiglia? Yeah, it's Famiglia. Famiglia, Famiglia pizza. Yeah, but, Famiglia. but the beautiful thing is, you know, while we're in the midst of running down sponsor, potential sponsors, uh, I'd like to also slam Vistaprint business card and printing, online printing megalith. And, uh, uh, you, you know, when we get you your show on this, and I, I can almost guarantee that <laughs> you will have one, mm. it should just be this is what Brendan O'Day is angry about today. That might be a uh, as a general a, theme. That might be a Just good idea. Just come here, sit sit in this window, and complain about stuff. Yeah, I don't think a once a week program would be enough. 
Uh, There's enough time. You want to <laughs> do a daily show? You want to be? I mean, hands down, no way. Under understand that. The, I mean, mm-hmm. the, the broadcast hours run 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. Same business yeah. hours as the as River West Film and Video. Sure. So I mean, 3 p.m. That's the morning show. Yeah. Yeah. There's no. There's no way uh, that I could. Uh, that I could get uh, by the fifth day, I'd be in here talking about how pretty flowers are. Uh, I don't know that I could maintain my ire for an hour a day every day. Well, um, not a few, well once a week. Yeah. Oh, once definitely. Once a week. Yeah, we'll work something out. Uh, m- Monday is wide open. There's nothing programmed on Mondays. <laughs> you get a prime time. Yeah, I think we'll we'll focus on something like that. Um, so, uh, so Vista Print, what the hell's their deal? Uh, what time is it? We're into this for what forty. Uh, I'm on, I'm I I said I'd be here for another 20 minutes. So okay. it's it's not again, this is we we are we are legitimately screwing around. This is that's perfect. As, this is as unserious as radio gets. No, this is wonderful. Um this uh this reminds me of a uh, long time ago on on radio overnights um in college when we would run out of people to staff the radio station. So you'd pull ridiculously long shifts and run out of things to talk about and run out of music to play that you wanted to hear. And so we would just take the the news as it came in off the wire and we would rip it apart and comment on it and, and, uh, and just have a good time just kind of blasting that apart. But, um, yeah, so, um, so it's uh you know there's there's little things you know there's there's little things um that can get you down that can get you worked up and this is a nice little opportunity to to i guess put it out there and and say uh you know i i don't like the way this is going i don't like i don't like how uh i don't like how things work because you know how things can work that's probably the worst thing is that we've come to a certain level of knowledge (laughs) and because we can experience so much more because whether we whether we experience it directly or whether we view it being experienced by others through online content uh you know when things just suck uh out of expedience or cost cutting or um you know things like that i was i was reading a, a headline in the journal and um you know, I can understand why Joel McNally and guys like that over at the Shepherd Express consider uh, the journal to be a, a, a conservative, uh, hard bent conservative rag of, of, of practically neocon proportions. There was a headline about um, uh, BMO Harris Bank that just bought M and I. Oh yeah, yeah. I just actually dealt with that trying to do. A of all things, uh, a photo assessment of, of, oh, of yeah, yeah. you know, for crack and damage prior to the road construction up in West Bend. Sure, sure. Yeah. So my dad had to go through like three levels of Canadian executives <laughs> just to get <laughs> get approval to yeah, walk around go. with a camera. There you go. Uh, yeah, uh, and and their PR flacks are amazing because um, the story in the journal was basically um, about how because of the acquisition of M and I. Um, they are 25%, BMO Harris is 25% closer to their goals of, of um, uh, I don't know, the, the financial goals that they set for themselves in this acquisition. It was a $4.1 billion acquisition of M&I. Um, but uh, they wanted to eliminate redundancies, which means fire the shit out of people who they consider to be doing the same job at two different locations and that it can all be dumped on one person. Uh, but um, they're talking about this in such great terms that, oh, look, they're right on track. Go, go, company, go and and uh, get your money together. You guys are really right where you want. You set these goals to save $830 million and wow, you're really doing it. And in about the seventh or eighth paragraph, they say this came about by eliminating 151 jobs in Milwaukee (laughs) and 347 jobs across BMO Harris locations in Canada. So there's about 500 people without their jobs today. And I'm sure that they are just reading this article going, "Woo! they've made their goals. They're going to be closer. This is so great. What great news for BMO Harris. Wait a minute. What? I lost my... What? I got fired so BMO Harris could have a great, happy news story about their... Great. Wow. Awesome. And then 
Bebo Harris was so impressed with how much how much a progression they had made on the on the pursuit of their goal that they decided to cut another 354 jobs, 157 of which are in Milwaukee. <laughs> There's 300 plus people that were all making between 25 and 50 thousand in dollars, and and another you know 20, probably 20 to 40 thousand in benefits packages. That's all gone. So, BMO Harris's net profitability. Uh, and how great that is, how that translates to the local market is roughly the decreased purchasing power of approximately 1.5 million annually. That's really a cool way to tell. I don't, and I guess I don't understand the Milwaukee Journal's um, take on this, to run that story in this great positive light that, wow, look at BMO Harris just kick ass and hit their goals when the obvious local story is, holy crap, 317 people have been disemployed by this company's takeover of a local state-owned federal, but it's federally chartered, chartered but state-owned bank. Yeah. Who's going to benefit yeah. from this except it's the top shareholders of the company, which ironically, uh, my, 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 my mother's remaining estate uh, still holds some, uh, some M&I stock, which I'm sure is going to be converted into BMO Harris stock. It'll be great for her. So if you want to go to Merrill, Wisconsin and go protest my mother and the stock she has, she's a really nice old lady. She's 84 years old. She has uh, uh, Alzheimer's and, and uh, she won't know who you are. She won't know who I am, uh, but she will, uh, and she won't know what you're talking about. Um, uh, but she's one of those people that um, used to do well living off of um, the dividends that stocks that stock ownership provided and dividends that's um that's almost that's uh th th y you can't help but be nostalgic for the concept right um because i don't i don't know when this well i if the if the financials are one of the last areas of the economy that are strong because of the massive bailout that the tax-paying citizenry of the United States afforded places like Goldman Sachs that were too big to fail, and uh, IB, or UBS, and and uh, various gigantic uh, insurance companies that had gotten so deep into the real estate debacle. Um, I don't understand why, where, how we wound up with a local newspaper who has rolled over so far. Maybe it's because the only people that can afford advertising are the banks and the insurance companies and they're now kissing the asses of their advertisers. But I don't know when we got to a point of where uh, the news department, the business news department, refused to balance an article with the obvious local angle and its impact upon that. So, one of those things. Yeah, there's no good way to turn that thing around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, um, yeah, so, um, there's some cheerful news. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, right in your local paper. Good for you, and, and, uh, and good to know that your local news staff uh, wants to tell you the angle from the, um, from the, uh, from the bank's perspective and doesn't give a crap about the 317 people that uh, are no longer working for that bank because they were considered to be expedient uh, and redundant. And, uh, and I'm sure nobody's got an increased workload. I'm sure nobody's, uh, oh, you know, no. scrambling and working harder. And um, But it is good that they did save an extra $1.5 in salary here in the Milwaukee area. Good for you. Good on you. Good on you there, BMO Harris. Way to... Way to really uh, come into the, the states and uh, show you're willing to back those people that pulled your ass out of the fire when you were going to go bankrupt because of your lousy investment uh, experience and the, the bullshit that you guys propagated upon the American public and the, and the investors of the world. So. All right. There so um, 
So what is the solution? Mm. Uh, well, to that one little debacle is to is to have a, a news department that uh, doesn't um, uh, that that does the news that that actually that actually um, goes out and investigates and and asks those five basic questions, but asks them of all participants involved in the story, not just take we had a I'm from a newspaper family and we had an editor who literally didn't write news stories she would take incoming press releases and basically take out the the obvious references to uh, us I we <laughs> and and make it a, a generic uh, more generic as though someone as though she might have written it um, but it, it was as though she might have written it after someone had slipped her a fiver and said, hey, write this nice thing about us. Uh, so she was more than happy to, to do that. Uh, and, I, and I think, you know, kind of the same thing at Journal Communications. And this kind of comes back. We can come all the way back around to the shittiness of the Internet right here. Um, why doesn't the Journal Sentinel have a, an aggressive staff of reporters like they had 20 years ago, 30 years ago? Because all those people have been fired. Because they became expensive, because they got older, though they were extraordinarily productive, they were great writers, they became expensive. So they all get fired, and why do they get fired? Because the, the newspaper has no more revenue. And why does the newspaper have more, no more revenue? Because everybody in the world wants to get all their shit off the internet for free, and, and somebody's still got to pay those reporters to go out and dig up the news story. Uh, and, and everybody wants to argue that, well, they should have figured that out. They should have figured out how to monetize the Internet. Um, but at every, at every turn and every attempt to monetize the Internet has been met with yet another hack and another workaround and another way to not pay productive people who go out and do things to gather stuff, either news or musicians or other forms of artists. Everybody's happy to take their stuff right off the Internet without paying for it. And at some point, the machine starts to break down. That's what ends up happening. And what you end up with in place of that are 150 boutique restaurants that everybody spends their money in instead of buying CDs and movies and, and TV shows and things like that and newspapers. So, so yeah, we've got know, a I society I think we've, that we've lost as a, as a culture. We've really lost a taste for muckracking. We've or, or uh, properly, you know, like proper old school journalism, where if you're not causing trouble, you're not properly reporting a story. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. Um, uh, but we've we've supplanted that with because we've wanted what we seem to want today is we seem to want to put our anybody that's in the news that's any level of celebrity any level of notoriety we want to celebrate them and put them on a pedestal instead of tear them down uh, and the only way we want to tear them down is depending on which beach bikini they have on this week or beach body they have um, we don't so much and and we're also very happy to tear down the unknown individual because today you can become a celebrity just because you don't throw shit away because you store stuff in your house you're a celebrity now that's kind of ridiculous when you think about it uh shows like hoarders shows like storage wars um uh you get some obscure civil war relic uh, bequeathed to you in some fashion and suddenly you're on TV on, on Pawn Stars and, uh, and you're a celebrity in your little local community. So it's this r radical pursuit of celebrity, I think, that's driven a lot of people um, you know, away from meaningful content. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, it, and you know, what's funny is even in my own life, I mean, it's, I'm almost to the point where I'd settle for that. At least, God, give me a reason to wake up in the morning and do things in the world um celebrity used to seem like a really good idea and <laughs> <laughs> well I, I think there's a lot enough vh1 uh, where are they now stories to uh to say <laughs> that maybe celebrity wasn't necessarily uh, a fine idea that there's off there's a lot of foibles that come with it um but uh, you know, uh, pursuit of celebrity is certainly one thing. I think obviously, um, uh, legitimate celebrity that comes with pursuit of something meaningful, and the celebrity that can potentially come with that, 
is probably the celebrity that has more um, staying power, and you're not so much the flavor of the day. But what do we do with a consumer base that has been um, cultured and biased against meaning? Hmm. Uh, well, um... I mean, people don't want things that mean things anymore. At least this is the message that we get every day, every day, every day from all of the, uh, the, the you know, all, all of the media institutions that represent the establishment. The establishment exists to sell us, you know, I don't know what. What do people buy? Fancy coffee, new cars, um, uh, y- you know, uh, iPads. Well, yeah, we have the yeah. only uh, we angry have birds. We have a crazy society that 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 um, I, this has happened in the last five years. Um, we have of people under the age of twenty five, eighteen to twenty five, eighty seven percent of people who have an income that identifies them as living below the poverty level have smartphones. Yeah, you know, there's never been a better time to be poor. Exactly, uh, but perhaps this speaks to the ever-evolving definition of poor. Well, right. I, I, when when you have a government that decides what the definition of poor is, so they can create a new voting class, or or they can curry favor with certain uh, demographics, uh, and on the other side, you have them. So you've got you've got this rising number that defines poverty, and you have this declining number. That, uh, that that defines uh, wealth and rich, quote unquote. Um, how is that? Where's the middle class? Um, yeah, yeah, it's like people that are, are that want to like actively make things on their own and like run their own program that doesn't necessarily fit into the you know the larger narrative of this I don't know um, discussion uh, yeah, I don't know I don't know uh, we, we th- you know the nice thing about this format is that we have plenty of time to solve all of the world's problems <laughs> yeah well uh, never I, to I, be I, done we, it's, it's going to take us the rest of the year just to identify them I think um, <laughs> well yeah that's I get you know I get um, I get asked about being angry and, and what what do you have to be angry about I mean, because you seem like a very angry, disillusioned, unhappy man. Not disillusioned. Uh, I think uh, my eyes are wide open. Uh, Now, yes. mm, Well, sure. Uh, Yeah, now, right now. Um, uh, And that, you know, I I just, I don't know. It's been about a 15-year... assessment i guess in and discovery of it's not disillusionment i I, you know obviously i you wanted to believe what you believed and when you can start to finally see things for what they really are um uh, the simplest thing i guess is always to follow the money and if you do that um you find that that drives a lot of things uh whether it be politics um or services, or relationships. Um, if you see your way around that, uh, you can avoid a lot of common problems. Uh, y- you can you can prevent yourself from getting wrapped up in a lot of things that late later on you find out was all a bunch of smoke and mirrors. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, despite what it sounds like, there are ways in which you, yourself, the listener, can be happy despite all of this. <laughs> uh, really? Well, I would hope. I mean, d- I, I mean, d- I mean, do you? G- are there reasons that people can walk down the street and smile in twenty? Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. No, I live a very happy life. I'm very happy and very content in my life because I do have that. Uh, I do have. Uh, my eyes wide open. I do see where we're headed. I do see what's what's at work and what's uh, uh, what's working against us. So when you have that, when that's going your way, uh, there's a lot to be happy about. Um, a lot to be happy about. It's seven fifty nine.
on yeah. the River West Radio. That's right. And there you have it, Brendan O'Day with Things to be Happy About. Uh, this has been the uh, inaugural episode of the Economy Superstar Radio Hour. I am T.W. Hanson. We will be back next week, Thursday, 7 p.m., and every week henceforth and, and so on, uh, bringing you uh, news of entrepreneurial doings and uh, general malarkey here in wonderful River West neighborhood, uh, brought to you live right here at River West Film and Video in River West, River West, River West, River West, River West, River West Radio dot com. Uh, here, I'll put the music on. Play us out. Play us out. Wisconsin Memorial Park and Heartland did not have that long of a run. That's like a three hour round trip. Oh, well, that'll be good. How's it going? Hey. Nice listening in. Good night tonight. Really good night. I got your radio show on. Better than anything, right? What's it called? What's the name of it? This is the Economy Superstar Hour tonight. We just wrapped up. Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. Not we're not on anymore. We're not on. We are officially, uh, we're off. Uh, uh, anger, um, sadness, and happiness. Oh, I th- <laughs> I mo- I mostly, I, I th- honestly, I think the topic we managed to cover in the most detail was the recent BMO takeover of the uh, of M and I Bank. Uh, Emil Harris, the big Canadian yep. bank, took over M and I, and well, our our wonderful local large media conglomerate ran a story about how great this is, and that they're 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 almost a year ahead of their goal structure because. They wanted to make 830 million off this acquisition, and they're 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 a year ahead of schedule on it because they laid off way more people in Milwaukee than they thought they were going to. Now the local newspaper runs it from the angle of this is so great for this great company. Yeah. There's barely a mention in the article of how many people have been shit canned in the process. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, yeah, about a million five of purchasing power of the almost 317 people that were laid off or been fired.